All right, we're going to go ahead and install the radium engineering PCB baffle on the car. We're going to do it today. So in the box, you're going to get the PCB bat valve, the baffle, the plug, because you can actually run two valves off of this one baffle. And then you're also going to get the baffles that go inside of the plate. It'll come with some fuel line. It's going to be 3 8 inch, 6 a.n. fuel line. So you can get it. Yeah. Very nice. We're not going to use it. And then the piece de la resistance, the radium engineering baffle plate. So, on the back side of your plate, you have the spots where the baffles are going to go. So, we're going to open up this bag. We're going to take out our baffles, which are very nicely wrapped in saran wrap. I should just get a knife and cut it. I want to keep the finish nice, that's why I didn't cut it with a knife, however it is going to be coated with oil and gasoline, so I guess it really wouldn't matter, and it would appear that either baffle can go on either side, so I'm going to get you a better angle so you can see what I got going on here. See, you got your screw hole patterns here. They're going to run along. It's slightly angled up right there. This piece is slightly angled up. So, bam, that's how your baffle is going to go. And again, these are symmetrical. That little cutout is the same on both baffles. So, it really doesn't matter which one goes where. Now, if you dig deeper into your bag of goodies there's the plug for the side we're not going to use we're not going to use this side right here and then this is the PCV valve right here see what that kind of looks like so the way it works is when there's positive pressure it's essentially just a check ball check valve positive pressure on this side gets expelled through the tube into your catch can or back into your intake manifold if you do not have a catch can. It's kind of why catch cans are important, especially with direct injection, because there is no port injection, so there's no fuel to clean your intake valves. So any oil and dirt and dust and grease and whatever you get up on there is gonna stay there. So now you have this nice baggie of hardware. It comes with one uh, tightening clamp I guess you would call it it's just got a little screw on there so you can tighten it and then it's got two pinch clamps we're probably not going to use any of those um, but we will need these little screws now I'm thinking I'm probably going to put a tiny little dab of blue Loctite on the end of these just because I don't want my baffles falling off inside of my PCV plate um, they're not really going to go anywhere, most likely aren't going to hurt anything. But this little tiny screw would probably get out into the system and, and cause problems. So. size Allen key here. Which would be nice if we can return. The smallest I have is a two and a half and it's a two. 
All right, so we will flash forward to a time when I have the appropriate tool to get this in. Um, but for now, we can put the plug in and we can attempt to put in the PCV valve itself. Actually, we're probably not even going to do that. So I'm going to get it started, but I'm not going to put it in all the way because I would like to lube my O-ring, which actually isn't a big deal. So I am in my living room on the carpet. So guys, wife, girlfriend's probably going to be pissed off if she sees you doing this, but we have a little bit of smart living oil that I got from my tractor, got it from Giant. So whatever, no big deal. And we only need a little bit of this, so we're going to fill the cap. Just a wee bit. And we're going to set it up here so we don't knock it over. Then we're going to take a rag and put down in front of the carpet. And then keep our finger in the oil. Go ahead and get some on this over here. Don't be afraid to put a lot on there. I mean, you really don't have to put a lot on there, but this system is designed to catch excessive oil anyway. That's specifically its purpose. So you're not going to hurt it by getting oil into it. And that's going to be a number 10 Allen key. Nope. Bigger than an 8, smaller than a 10, which means I don't have the appropriate Allen key to tighten that up. It's one of the things I absolutely hate to see people doing at work, but we're going to do it nevertheless. So that surface is actually really smooth and we just coated it with oil, but we're going to try to get our channel locks on. And we want to be careful because we don't want to damage the finish on the plate itself. Bam. So that's as tight as that's going to get with these channel locks. And I will be sure to get my Allen keys from work. These are actually really nice pole bolts. I got them from Lowe's. Um, they're cool because they're self-adjusting. You just put it out there and it'll stop and lock when it's when it's ready to go. All right, cool. So that's on there. See, it's in there nice and flush, nice and smooth. Everything looks good. So now we're going to do the same thing with the PCV valve. We're going to get a little bit of oil on our finger, run across the O-ring. You never want to put an O-ring in dry. I don't care what, what it's on, where it's going. O-rings never get installed dry. And for this, I'm going to get my adjustable wrench, aka my knuckle buster. Now I got an adjustable wrench here, but also if you're looking for really cheap, not bad for the house, ratcheting box end wrenches, Duratec, I think this set here was 25 bucks. Really nice, reversible. I think it's got a 30 degree angle on it. Really nice ratchet action. Really cheap. Keep going on a budget, Duratec. But I don't have one big enough to fit here. This looks like it's most likely a 21 or a, probably a 15 16 or 7 8 and even my adjustable doesn't fit it. 
So we'll go ahead and stop the video here and we'll come back when I have tools. <laughs> Yay! So okay. So <clears throat> I actually went to Home Depot and just bought some Allen keys for the house. I got the Huskies. Yeah. Came with say and metric. So I was right. These are two millimeter bolts right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and assemble this baffle plate. <clears throat> Again, it's still kind of misty and muggy outside, so we're not gonna put it on today. But we are going to finish the assembly and make it look real nice. Wow. Very, very sad, sad impression of Borat. Here we go. So I got some JB Weld, which is the same thing as Loctite. And just the blue one. <clears throat> Does the same thing, it's just a thread locker. So we're going to keep our little goodie bag in front of us. See if you guys I can't even tell if you can see what I'm doing here. Get <laughs> there. Down. Alright. <clears throat> so hmm. that'll work. Again, I'm doing this in my living room, so it's not really ideal, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. But it's what I got. So this actually worked out really well. Put in a little drop on the thick bag. Then I can just roll the screw through it. See, I don't have a whole ton on there. It's just enough if you can focus on that. And that's actually a lot for this little screw, but it is what it is. We're gonna push it through our plate. And then we'll get it started in the thread hole. And I'll try to keep my hand out of there so you can see that it is actually me threading the screw in here. <laughs> and we've got a little tough. So this one has gotten to be a little stiff already, which is weird. It should be able to go all the way down to the bottom of the plate. So before I tighten it, tighten it, I'm going to go ahead and get the other one started. And again, just a little bit, not a whole lot, just enough to keep it, uh, keep it on there, you know? And don't force the threads. Sometimes it's it's better to turn it left a little bit just to get it to bite in and then start turning it back to the tidy position. <clears throat> and seeing as how you guys get the gist now, I'll most likely just fast forward through this, maybe play a little bit of music, and I'll come back when both of these baffles are on. So there you go, there you have it. That's what your baffle's gonna look like when it's done. And they're all nice and sweet. And that is ready to go into the car. So now, when we take the old plate off, the old PCV off, 
we're going to have to reuse the gasket so there is a gasket that runs through this channel right here up and around and come back through and again when we swap it over we'll make sure that we lube it on the way in we'll take some oil out of the catch can and just lube it to put it in here and then we'll lube it again just so that the mating surface up against the motor block is uh is nice and moist that way it'll seat properly with no leaks and we'll come back uh, when that's going okay, on so install day the pcv baffle i couldn't get the i don't know what that's the purge valve system off of the thing so i just laid it over it's a little kinked up but it should still be fine it's not going to break so you got to get your throttle body these just these sit on little perches and they just slide off this one and this one you don't have to unhook them they just perch in here and here on this side on your intake manifold and then to get your throttle body harness off you have to pull this orange clip back and then press in on the center and pull and it just comes right off it's a seven millimeter down here on the intake tube 10 millimeters across the top i mean there's a ton of videos out there on how to take your intake manifold off now the pcv baffle as you can see hopefully it's nice and oily in there those are eight millimeter bolts so i got my brand new radium i got the stock baffle as you can see it's a single baffle it's fairly oily it probably wasn't bad i mean i can't tell if this was failed or not we need this gasket so we're going to take the gasket out scoot the gasket over to this one and then i'm also going to use one of these little spring clips to go on here to make sure that the fuel line stays securely attached because the old one was on a 90 this one comes straight off and i have an amazon catch can so my hoses have to come out and go left so I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a button back up and I'll show you what it looks like before I put the intake manifold back on. But I'm not going to make this a 40 minute video. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys get it. So I'll show you when I come Real back. Real quick, just so you know, this gasket can only go in one way. So if you're sitting here fighting with it and you can't get it to match up exactly, flip it over. Because um, you probably have it upside down. So it should match the stock profile nothing should be different there so if you're struggling with it flip it over and try again all right so there it is installed so um yep make sure your bolts are going in straight before you uh really 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 tug on them um i tried to torque them down to the same torque spec as the manifold which in case you're curious is 14 foot pound or 168 inch pound um but the bolts are so small and the torque wrench is so big it's really hard to get it in there but there it is installed i'm gonna go ahead and get the manifold back on and i'll give you guys a picture of what it looks like when everything's back together all right okay so here it is done done everything's back on catch cans reinstalled you can't even really see it down in there and again for your pattern on your intake manifold start in the middle work your way out to the ends just to make sure that's your gasket seat properly because these have individual port seals on them it's not like one solid gasket so you want to make sure they pull in even and 14 foot pound is your torque spec for that so that's pretty much it um, hopefully I'll get the brakes on soon I'll do a little brake video and do the downpipe soon <laughs> As soon as I can get a good weekend off and I can get the top of the driveway, we'll get all that stuff done. Thanks for watching.